I had been hypomanic for many years, we figured out. And during that time, I felt very well. I was able to do things very, very well. And um, I, for instance, I wasn't um, afraid of anybody. You know, I could go up and talk to somebody and talk at length at a party and have a great time and not know anybody at the party. Um, I just felt very self-assured and very able to focus and I was working a lot of extra things. I just had everything filled on my calendar all the time. It was a very fun time for me. My name is Julie Kostenbader. I work at Westmoreland Peer Support as a certified peer specialist. Uh, right now, I'm in an exciting job. I'm trying to help to open the Crisis Center at Greensburg's Excella Health. When I was a junior in college, I was taking an overload of classes, and I started to have terrible anxiety after having um, two weeks of the flu. And I couldn't sit down. I was walking around and around, and I was afraid to go back to school, which was unusual for me. And when I went through that whole scenario, um, I, I was ready to drop out. And I had been very active in school and very happy there before that. Um, I ended up um, finding out that that anxiety that was waking me at night and incapacitating me in the daytime was um, because of depression. I got to the place where I was suicidal. And um, I was a Christian. I didn't want to actively commit suicide. So I passively stopped eating and drinking. So I was kind of afraid of people because I was a different person then. And I was um, kind of mourning myself. I had been so well for so long. And I also had a lot of problems with um, the sleep. The sleep was very difficult. So um, during the day, I was still anxious all the time. At one point, I was calling my mother every 15 minutes and saying, I just can't take this. I can't take this. And finally, she said to me, Julie, you're going to have to. <laughs> so um, in that situation, you know, I, I was out of control and, and troubled by it. It was um, very difficult on my family. They saw me doing what I was doing, and they were scared. So my mother tried to force me my hand, and I ended up at uh, La Trobe Hospital for three days for an evaluation. Afterwards, um, I was told that I was to take these pills, and I would be fine, and I needed to stop overloading my circuits. And so um, I found that that wasn't true. Um, I started getting very depressed, so I fired my psychiatrist and ended up uh, going to Western Psych for another evaluation. Um, I got better several times uh, along the way. Um, I would just kind of uh, be able to push again and to get out of the depression. Um, for a long time, I would be incapacitated in bed with anxiety all night long and n with no energy in the daytime. And uh, when I finally would get to the place where I was able to get a good night's sleep and start pushing myself to get out in the community, then, you know, I knew I was getting better. Uh, two months later, I'd start with another bad episode of depression until they diagnosed me properly with bipolar 2. The thing that's been most helpful to me, I think, is um, the Wellness Recovery Action Plan with Mary Ellen Copeland. Um, th in that, I was able to define things that I had learned along the way. Um, the biggest thing probably, though, that has helped me the most is the support groups. I was involved in a support group through Western Psych for many years, and uh, that's where I connected with the Speakers Bureau, and I saw people that had had the diagnosis and felt better now. And that gave me hope that that would happen for me. That's one of the reasons why I think the uh, certified peer specialist position is so important for the community, because uh, the people who have had the illness and have recovery skills can share them with others. Now I'm doing great. Everything is um, fine in my life. I can count on myself. I uh, love my job. I am very excited about opening the crisis center and being involved in helping people when they're at their worst need. And I have uh, been able to 
you know, I, my faith in God is strong. My, um, my activities are easy. I have been able to go to Russia on two missionary trips in the last three years. And that's been very exciting for me because that was one of the things I thought I would lose. I do try to take care of um, my stress levels too. I um, know that I can kind of handle a lot of different um, problems and situations with people, but I've also learned that I can't do everything for everyone. And it's been very helpful for me to um, make sure that I take care of myself as well. I was um, in the middle of getting internships for uh, uh, big accounting firms. And um, I was able to get you know, five offers from them, but I was afraid that they would find out that I had an illness and um, that they wouldn't want to hire me. Um, after my second internship, um, I returned to one of the big eight accounting firms and I kept it quiet still, even though I'd been hired. There was an issue with stigma there, but I came to a family business and my mother had been uh, talking to her friends, her customers, about me and my illness. So I was out of the closet automatically. <laughs> And after that, it, was, it wasn't a big issue for me. I miss the ability to um, stay up late and be able to do what I need to do and not worry about that. Um, I have to be careful about m making sure that my, um, my schedule is not over overwhelming for somebody else. It doesn't seem overwhelming to me. Um, they always said to me, I, you overload your circuits, and, you know, I just didn't think that was at all possible because I didn't feel overwhelmed at all. So now I'm careful about that, and it's worth it because I don't have the severe depression that would come out right after that. That there's hope that no matter what has happened in the past, that they think that they can't get well, that there are always new medications and new ideas and DBT is pretty new and all these things that are used to help us are, are advancing. Um, the brain is the most chemical, uh, most complicated thing in our whole lot of body and they don't know a lot about the brain, but they're learning. And so there's always hope that those illnesses, those uh, situations can go away.